In this video, we'll be introducing you to Overleaf, which is an online compiler for LaTeX documents. Now, if you've never heard of LaTeX before, it's a pretty standard document preparation system that's used for producing scientific manuscripts and especially math papers. It's free to use and collaborate on documents via Overleaf. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but I think once you get used to it, you'll find it far exceeds the capabilities of Word, Google Docs, or really any other processor you might use to write math. So, since it's going to be the way that you're going to be submitting homework in the future, I wanted to give you a brief video and an example of what a homework solution in LaTeX might look like. Let's flip over for a moment to a sample solution of problem one from homework one in this class. Now, this document was produced, the solution was produced using LaTeX, and I wanted to discuss a few key features before I actually show you how to write those up in Overleaf. The first thing I want to point out is notice how there's really a mix of words and symbols. There's not too many long strings of mathematical equations, they're mostly broken up with sentences. That's because really I want your solutions to tell a story about the problem you're working on. I want these solutions to read like you're explaining this to a buddy or something like that. The second thing I want to point out is the definitions of mathematical symbols. So in the first sentence, you'll notice it says, let P of T be the size of the US population in millions, T years after 1790. This gives the reader a very clear idea of what you're using the variable P of T to represent. And there's two advantages of this sort of clarity. One, again, it helps your reader know what you're saying. But two, it will help you to clarify what you mean when, you do, when you're talking about P of T. Now, a second feature I wanted to point out is the difference in fonts between math equations for example, some which are in line, math equations and formula, some which are not in line, and the plain text. Right? One of the key advantages of LaTeX is being easily able to switch between math mode, where your equations and formula will be displayed in one font, and plain text mode, where your text will be displayed in a different font. Okay? Finally, I also wanted to point out that the use of symbols here, lambda, the approximation symbol. LaTeX has really easy, simple keyboard shortcuts for including such commands, some of which we'll be covering in the rest of this video. So without further ado, let's switch over to Overleaf. If it's your first time using Overleaf, you're going to need to register an account. If you've used it before, you can simply log in using your pre-existing account, which is what I'm going to do right now. If you want to create a solution to a homework problem using Overleaf, I think the best way to get started is to click on New Blank Project. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that this is your Homework 3 solution. After your new project is loaded, you'll see your screen split into three segments. We're not really going to use the left one, so I'm going to minimize that for now. On the left-hand side of the screen is what we'll call the input, and on the right hand side is what we'll call the output. The output is ultimately this beautiful looking document that you will submit to Canvas as part of your homework solution. When you're done with this document, you simply click the download PDF button, save that PDF to your desktop and upload it to the appropriate assignment within Canvas. Now on the left hand side is where you're going to be typing up all the beautiful math equations that you'll be using in your solution. The document you see here is sort of a what you see is what you mean type approach to programming, unlike Word where you're kind of clicking on different buttons and there's all these weird like spacing issues and stuff to deal with. Basically here you control all that in what you write in between the begin and end document symbols. Basically you can think of this side of the screen, the input, as split into two parts. The preamble which contains information such as packages you might use, document class declarations, as well as title information. And then the body, which is everything in between the begin document and end document portions of the input. Now, you'll notice that in this current document, there's only two things in the body. There's a make title command, and there's a backslash section introduction. Now, if you zoom in on the output on the right, you'll see that the make title command has created three lines, a title, an author, and a date. And then that section introduction line has created a header with a labeling of one next to it. Now you can change what appears in this title and what is executed by this make title command by changing the information inside curly brackets in the preamble. For example, if I wanted to distinguish myself as an Esquire, Bill and Ted's coming back this summer, then I could do so and recompile the output and I would see that change reflected. I can also change the labeling of a section. For example, if it's a homework assignment, I might want a different section per problem. 
So again, recompile or hit Control Enter if you prefer keyboard shortcuts, and you'll see the label of that section change to problem one. If you'd like to get rid of the labeling of the section, simply add an asterisk, recompile with Control Enter, and you'll see now that it just says problem one. Now that you have your document all set up, you can start typing your solution to the homework problem. Let's suppose that we were working on problem one from homework one, the solution of which you saw at the beginning of this video. Then my first sentence, I should start writing a definition of the variable p of t. So let p of t be the population, blah, 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 we won't bore you with the typing details. If we hit control enter, we'll see the text, just as we've written here, be displayed in the output on the right. Of course, one of the advantages I was telling you about LaTeX earlier is that variables such as P of T, mathematical formulae and expressions, should be displayed in a different font from the plain text. The way to accomplish this and to switch to math mode in the middle of a LaTeX sentence is simply to put dollar signs around the text you'd like to display. So if we compare that with our previous solution, we can now say that the variable P of T is displayed in math mode. You'll also have noticed in the document that was produced at the beginning of this example that some equations were written centered in what we call display mode instead of inline math mode. This can also simply be accomplished by starting a new line in your input on the left. And there's many ways to center an equation in LaTeX. The way that I actually like, even though it is not preferred for some spacing purposes, but it's sort of like an easy way to get started, is to use double dollar signs around the equation. So if I want to write the expression p prime equals ap, write a differential equation and have it centered, then that will be accomplished. I'm going to post a link to a 30-minute get started with LaTeX tutorial that's on the Overleaf website, and they'll give you some other options besides the double dollar signs to use here as well. Now, I also mentioned as one of the advantages of LaTeX that you can easily enter Greek symbols and other mathematical symbols into your document with simple command line actions. So if we wanted to change this A to the Greek letter lambda, then all Greek letters are simply backslash followed by the name of the letter and recompile and voila, now my A is a lambda. I'm not going to have time to introduce you to all the different LaTeX commands here, although again, many of them are linked to in those introductory LaTeX videos. Sorry, not videos, but intro, introductory LaTeX activities that are posted on Overleaf. So I hope you'll take some time to look through that, and hopefully you can use Google as your friend for searching for the commands you need based on your homework assignment. The only other commands I wanted to briefly introduce you before closing out this video are the frac command and the super and subscript commands, which I think you'll come in handy with your first homework assignment. So if instead of p prime, I actually wanted to write out the Leibniz notation dp dt, I can do so using the frac command. And as you start typing frac, you'll notice the command is automatically populated for you. It has two sets of curly brackets here, the first of which will contain the numerator of your fraction, and the second which contains the denominator. So recompiling, which I recommend you do often in the beginning so that you avoid errors, we can now see that our equation is displayed as dp dt equals lambda p. Second, a lot of times we use subscripts or superscripts in math to denote powers or subscripts on equations, like for example initial conditions in this course. So let's suppose that I wanted to define an initial condition p naught, then using math mode I can do p underscore zero and the underscore command would place the zero as a subscript. If I wanted to change that to a superscript I would change the underscore to a caret symbol, and now you have p to the power 0. In a future video, I'll also give you some tips about how to enter MATLAB graphics, uh, or any graphics for that matter, and MATLAB code into a document, because you'll be needing that. But this should be enough to get you started with homework 1. I do highly recommend that you take some time to go through the LaTeX tutorials. Uh, there's a half hour getting started with LaTeX tutorial on the Overleaf website that's really helpful, just to kind of build some skills. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know.